the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. May this holy and blessed day, the day of Hosanna, Palm Sunday according to the church calendar, may the Lord Jesus bless every Christian who is celebrating Palm Sunday today and those who have celebrated it earlier. In Christ we are one. In Christ we are always united regardless what our differences are as far as theological, dogmatic or canonical differences, but in Christ we are always united. May the Lord Jesus who entered Jerusalem on this holy Sunday of Palm Sunday who entered Jerusalem triumphantly sitting on that mule to show a sign of victory that he came to crush evil to crush condemnation to crush Satan and to crush death once and for all he who has Christ has life and life eternal and we thank the Lord Jesus for whatever circumstances we go through whatever situations we may go through love never fails the Lord Jesus is love and he's always taught us to love one another regardless if you may allow me I'd like to with utmost love and humility thank the following respectable people and highly exalted who have shown that sign of love and gratitude i am indebted to them for the rest of my life and forever these are the letters the official letters which we received from the following An official letter was sent to us by His Holiness Margi Wargis III Yonan, Patriarch of the Ancient Church of the East. We are kissing your right hand, Your Holiness, and as your humble servant, I beseech you to always keep me in your prayers, Your Holiness. His Beatitude, Maria Daniel, Metropolitan of Baghdad and Basra, Iraq, of the Ancient Church of the East. My older brother, I love you and I will always love you. His Holiness, Mar Ignatius Ephraim, the second Patriarch of the Syriac Orthodox Church. Awun Maliyo Maria Alaha Nwarakh Al-Khon May the Lord always bless you, Your Holiness. An official letter was also received from the Papal Legate Father Joshua Tedros to His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, Bishop Daniel of the Coptic Diocese of Sydney, to our beloved Bishop Daniel, we love you very much so, and His Holiness Pope Tawadros II, I need your prayers, Your Holiness, always, to the entire beloved Coptic Church the Orthodox Coptic Church. I am indebted forever. An official letter from His Grace Antoine Sharbel Tarabai, Bishop of Maronite Church, Australia. Your Grace, thank you so much and I beg you to keep me in your praise. Fathers Elias Maron Garios and Father Pierre Matar Saint Maron Baal Lebanon. Lebanon always holds a very special place in my heart. I always pray 
for the safety of Lebanon and my beloved people who live in Lebanon in all its factions. Deputy Mayor, Councillor Sherbel Saliba, Fairfield City Council, New South Wales, thank you very much. Mr. Samir Youssef, Chaldean League of Australia, thank you very, very much. Flowers that we've received as well. And um, I'm absolutely humbled. Most Reverend Archbishop Anthony Fisher, OP, Roman Catholic Church, Australia. Your Eminence, I kiss your right hand in utmost love and humility, and I beseech you to keep me in your prayers, your, your Eminence. His Grace, Archbishop Makarios, Greek Orthodox Archbishop of Australia. And what a beautiful Eastern Orthodoxy the our beloved greek church your eminence i kiss your right hand in humility and love and i ask you to keep me in your praise reverend father robert pio albaye saint john paul ii parish maronite monastery in ride sydney thank you very much dear father and this is from our beloved, the Islamic faith, Sheikh Mustafa Badri, from the Shiad faction, head of Dawoodi Bohra community, Sydney, Auburn. Thank you, my dear brother and friend. This is from families. Daniel and Layla Abdullah family, prominent Maronite family. They are not just Maronite family, they are my family. I love you very much though, dear Danny and Layla. Also flowers received from the mayor of Cumberland Council, Lisa Lake and councillors and staff. I'm absolutely humbled, dear mayor. God bless you and the entire staff the entire councillors, the entire council of Cumberland. This is from an opera singer from Croatia who was on a visit in recent times to Australia and to Sydney and we had the privilege and the blessing to have to meet him in person. Stiepo Gled Marcos, he is a tenor opera singer from Croatia. God bless you and bless your family and bless our beautiful Croatia and the entire people of Croatia. This is uh, flowers received from Dr. Abir Ramo and family. Thank you, dear doctor. God bless you. And also flowers received from the Assyrian Sports and Cultural Club, Fairfield Heights, Sydney, Australia. Thank you very much to the president and all the committees and everyone who works in the Assyrian Sports and Cultural Club. First Corinthians 13, eight, love never fails. This is our Christian faith. But above all, this is our Christ, who is all love and always taught to love one another because God is love and the Lord Jesus he is God revealed in the flesh period he taught us to love everyone without any differentiation this will never change for as long as Christ lives in our hearts this will never change I've said it before and I'll say it again this young man who did this act almost two weeks ago, I say to you, my dear, you are my son. And you will always be my son. I will always pray for you. I'll always wish you nothing but the best. I pray that my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to enlighten your heart, 
enlighten your soul, your entire being, to realize, my dear, there is only one God who art in heaven, the creator of all mankind and everything else that is visible and invisible. And I say with absolute love, confidence and humility that God is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But you are my son, my dear, and the Lord knows it is coming from the bottom of my heart. I'll always pray for you. And for whoever was in this act, in the name of my Jesus, I forgive you, I love you, and I will always pray for you. For me, it's a, a priceless gift that I am not worthy of. I pray the Lord accepts it. One last thing, I say to our beloved, the Australian government and our beloved Prime Minister, the Honorable Mr. Albanese. I believe in one thing and that is the integrity and the identity of the human being. This is my belief and this is above all my Christian belief for this human identity, this human integrity is a God-given gift, no one else. Every human being has the right to the freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Every human being. The Buddhist has the right to express their belief. The Hindus have the right to express their beliefs. The Muslims have the right to express their beliefs. The atheists have the right to express their beliefs. Also the Christians have the right to express their beliefs. And for us to say that free speech is dangerous, that free speech cannot be possible in a democratic country, I'm yet to fathom this. I'm yet to fathom this. We should be able as civilized human beings as intellectuals, we should be able to criticize, to speak, and maybe at some certain times we may sound or we may come across offensive to somewhat degree. But we should be able to say, I should not worry for my life to be exposed to threat or to be taken away. A non-Christian can criticize my faith, can attack my faith. I will say one thing, may God forgive you and may God bless you. This is a civilized way, an intellectual way of approaching such events if or when they take place. But for us to say that because of this freedom of speech, it is causing dramas and dilemmas, therefore everything should be censored, then where is democracy? Then where is humanity? Where is integrity? Where is, where, where are the morals? Where are the ethics? Where are the principles? Where are the values which the Western world more so have been fighting for human rights, human rights, which is the value of the human. But you see the problem, the problem my beloved Australia and the entire world, the entire world. I'll, I've said this and I'll say it again. 
the Western world has succeeded exceedingly. The Western world has succeeded exceedingly in giving value to everything. But I always say this with utmost sadness in my heart. The Western world has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. The Western world has succeeded in giving value to everything, but has failed miserably in giving purpose to everything. But until we find the purpose of the thing, we can never give it value. We can never give it value. Human rights is human value. All these centuries, decades, We've been calling and crying and fighting for human rights, human rights. When will the time come? When will the time come for us to fight for what is the right to be a human, not human rights? Not human rights, the right to be a human. Nobody speaks about the right to be a human. Everyone speaks about human rights. And since we focused on value and we've denied the purpose. We have abused that human, abused. In order to finding out and knowing what is the purpose of the human, we need to go back to the origin of this human. And with all love and respect to every scientist, to every professor, to every knowledgeable man and woman out there with all love and respect the purpose of the human is written in Genesis 1 1 in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth God it's the purpose to that human God and until we come back to this true divine God we will continue abusing the human race because we got glued onto the value of the human and totally denied the purpose of the human. The purpose is the right to be a human, the value human rights. I stand as a very proud Aussie I want the Australian government to hear this and the whole world. I was born in Iraq. I am an Assyrian. My origin, I am an Assyrian and a very proud Assyrian. Because the Assyrians have a very profound history of knowledge, culture, science masters masters and as an assyrian i am a very proud one but above all and beyond all i belong to jesus christ of nazareth i'm a very proud christian jesus christ jesus christ is the love of my life this is a given this will never change. By His grace, I'm nothing, but He's everything. I was born in Iraq. I'm a Syrian Christian, a Syrian. Migrated to Australia in 1985. My second home is Australia. Let me say this to the Australian government and to every beautiful Aussie. I am a very proud Aussie. I may not look it, but as they say, do not judge the book by its cover. Maybe the looks is not Aussie, but the heart I can show you is a fair income true blue down under brother. I will put the prawns on the barbie with Mr. Albanese and with Mr. Peter Dutton any day of the, any time of the day. And I'll say to them, g'day mate, and let's have some bush taka meat pie mate, because life is not worth it. And fish burger and chocolate sundae is my shout, Mr. Albanese and Mr. Peter Dutton. I am a true blue Aussie. I am a proud to be an Australian. 
and wherever I go, wherever I travel across the globe, when I come back here, this is home. And I said it, I am very proud of these great Anzac warriors who gave their life up to the very human rights, to the very freedom of speech and freedom of religion. They died to keep and preserve the human identity and integrity. I salute my beloved Anzac warriors and whoever walks in that path must be saluted. And this is why I stand for that freedom of speech and freedom of religion. Every human has the right to the freedom of speech and, and freedom of religion. Every human being, no matter who that is, everyone has the right. God bless you. I've kept you for too long, but this is my normal me again. Alana Torokhar.